two years ago, I did one of these um, presentations, and John Rakowski, who I can see right at the back, introduced me as Andy's never worked at a company for longer than two years. So if you like what he says, give him a round of applause and we'll keep him. <laughs> and I'm still here, so we're doing OK. So I want to start off today with my dashboard, because I like to talk about me a lot. So at App Dynamics, we play a game. Every single meeting we do, someone will put a metric up on the wall and ask the audience, what do you think this is? So what do you think this is? No, that's 13,000. <laughs> I like it, though. <laughs> Possibly. No. No. This is actually my weight in kilos. And I'll share that with the world. And everyone who joins App Dynamics is going to see this video. So yeah, that's my weight in kilos. So as we start to build out this dashboard, we start with a question of, is that good or is that bad? And to know whether that's good, you've got to know another metric. So what do you think this one is? No. Ooh, close. No, not quite a month. That would be quite some weight loss. Closer. This was my weight on January the 1st this year when I decided I want to be a bit more healthy. I want to be able to walk up some stairs without sweating and without being out of breath. So that's where I started from. Any question? Any guesses on the last one? When is that right My goal. Where I want to be. Where I want to be specifically where I set my target of being by August the 1st. So I know I've got to get to that. This dashboard, everybody who loses weight wants to make one of these. And there's only one reason, really, why you want to make it. And that's to show off how well you've done. Right? If I hadn't have lost any weight, do you think I would have put this dashboard up on this wall? <laughs> If it just said 142 and then 145, I'd be, I'm sorry, if it said 158 and 175, I, I wouldn't put it up on the wall. So this dashboard really is a self-congratulatory dashboard that I've created to share with you all and make myself look good. And these are used regularly. Has anyone ever owned one of these? Good, you're all slim and athletic people, I'm sure. But if you've been to a Slimmer's World or you know, Weight Watchers, they encourage you to get one of these and stick it up on the wall and show yourself how well you're doing. And really, the idea is to go, yes, I'm doing well. I'm going to do better. But again, I've never seen anyone put up minus three on the weight loss column. So it only works when you're doing well, and it doesn't really help you do any better. Does anyone know what this dashboard is? Anyone got one of these? Handful of people. I've got one. It's on my watch right now. Right, this is a dashboard I take with me everywhere. And it has been, genuinely, part of my weight loss journey. Obviously, the white bit, you might guess, is the time. Not right now, but when I took this screenshot. And the red number is how many active calories I've burned. So today's is 1,725. This dashboard made me get up at 5 AM and go to the gym before I came here today to make sure that I hit my target every single day. This is a great dashboard to build to make me go and do something different. Right? And this is why Apple have been you know, really successful with this stuff. Eight is the number of minutes of exercise I've done. And there's a target associated with that. And the rings, by the way, with an Apple Watch, you call it, I want to close out my rings. So I want to get all the way around on red, green, and blue. Green is the number of minutes of exercise I've done. Again, today is 82 minutes. Seven is the number of hours I've actually just stood up. Fairly basic, but when you're working in IT, quite often you don't stand up for hours on end. So it's good just to have a, a, a reminder. And the Apple Watch does remind you of these things as well. It does say, hey, you haven't stood up for an hour. Do you want to go for a walk and get some coffee or something? And it's really good for driving those actions. The other thing they do really well is actually they baseline the, the amount of calories you've burnt. And often, on a weekend, I'll get a message that says, you haven't burnt as many calories as you normally would have at this time of the day. And it makes me realize it's Saturday. Maybe I'm a bit hungover, had a few many drinks last night, and probably need to go and do some exercise. So if we want to create a dashboard that actually gets other people to help me, 
I want to take both of those concepts and stick them together. And this is where we're going to start. So the, my formatting's changed a little bit. The number of calories I've burnt, or sorry, the number of calories I've intaken is actually another piece of information you need to know. Losing weight is not a secret. It's eat less than you exercise. Fairly simple. So I need to know how much I've eaten, and I need to know how much exercise I've done. In this case, you can see I've done more exercise than I have eating calories. And I have a deficit of 569. What we're now able to do is, if I share this dashboard with you, not only am I self-congratulating myself and trying to make everyone go, Andy, you're doing a great job, which is quite useful, but also I'm giving you the kind of information that's going to allow you to help me achieve my goal. If you take a look at this and add in a threshold for each one, and thresholds, we talk a lot about baselines in app dynamics because I genuinely think you can't set enough thresholds accurately. But when you've got a goal, you do want to set a threshold against it. And you can do that in App Dynamics too. But I'm going to set a goal for my daily deficit of cal calories that will allow me to achieve that target of 130 kilos by August the 1st. That's 1,400. That's my calorie deficit every single day. I have to exercise 1,400 calories more than I eat. That allows me to say, I'm failing today. It also allows me to say I'm failing because I haven't burnt enough calories today. But actually, I'm doing OK on the calorie intake, so I haven't eaten that much. Now, everyone in this room, if you look at this dashboard, can tell me, hey, Andy, you can have that sandwich. That's fine. But do you want to go take a, a walk up and down the stairs a few times? Because that's going to get you to your goal that's going to allow you to achieve the thing that you're trying to achieve. All that makes sense. So we started off with a dashboard, which these are the dashboards I see a lot of, to be honest. There's, there's metrics up on the wall that tell you how well you're doing or how poorly you're doing. So they allow you to update the world on your progress. They allow you to congratulate or commiserate yourself. Maybe they keep the team a bit happy when you're doing well, but actually they probably also demotivate your team if you're missing it every single day. So this kind of dashboard doesn't really help a, a spirit of collaboration. The next one is kind of the personal dashboard, the dashboard that says, this is what you personally need to do. And you can identify this because it doesn't actually tell me anything other than numbers. If you didn't know an Apple Watch, if you've never seen one, you've probably got no idea what any of those numbers mean. And I see a lot of these dashboards as well, dashboards that don't have a unit with the metric. And again, for a small Apple Watch that I look at every single day, that's fine. But you can't do that on a, a dashboard you put on the wall. Otherwise, no one knows what it's about or what they're supposed to do with it. So the pros of this one and the uses are that it's good for personal motivation. And it drives my day. It drives every action that I personally take. And the third level of dashboard is the one where we've combined all this together. And we've said, you know, we can update the world on progress because that's good. Um, we can show where all the problems are, and we can create actions for me as an individual, but also something that allows everybody in this room to help me achieve my goal as well. So that was the first kind of concept that I wanted to go through. You'll see quite a lot of this style of dashboard. This is one that quite a lot of offices have, right? It's how many days without an accident. And if you saw this, you're going to go and move that thing that's on the floor because you don't want to fail on this one. This one, by the way, is the one that I want to put up in App Dynamics. Um, I don't think we'd ever make 42 days, but you know, we'll give it a try. So I realized that I haven't actually taken you through an agenda of what I'm going to talk about. So quickly, the first point was how to make people, uh, how to make dashboards that get a team together and get everyone working on the same page. We've done that. Next, we're going to go through where to begin with dashboards, where can I find help? and what new tips I've got to share with you today. So where to begin? As we started uh, this, this thing, I, I showed you some metrics. If you start by just putting metrics on a white page, you're probably going to fail, in, in my opinion. The first thing you've got to do is think about what do you want to do with this dashboard? What is it going to enable for you? 
So think about it. Think about your audience. Think about who's going to use it, who's going to look at it. What do you want? Uh, do you even want a dashboard? As I said, the Apple Watch gives me three metrics. That's it. Outside of those three metrics, it buzzes when something goes wrong. It tells me you're not exercising enough. It tells me you, know, you haven't stood up for the last hour. And those alerts are actually better just when it buzzes. I don't want to look at it and see all that stuff all the time. I want it to tell me about the problem. So first of all, you need to work out, should I have a dashboard at all? Or should email or Slack or ServiceNow or any of the other tools that, that handle tickets, are they what I should be using? What outcome do you want from this dashboard? If you start with an outcome, you can't fail because you don't build the wrong thing. And how will the dashboard be used? Are you going to put it on the wall? Are you going to put it on your watch? Are you going to have it on your phone? Those are all important considerations to take into account as well. The next thing to do is, I like this Steve Jobs quote, people don't really know what they want until you show them. When it comes to a dashboard, if you're building this for someone else or building it for yourself, you want to see some examples of other dashboards, but not just, hey, here's a bunch of dashboards, what do you think? Really understand why those dashboards were created and what people use them for and, and why they're good at what they do. Next, you need to, in my opinion, take a piece of paper and a pencil, or if you want to be in the 20th century or 21st century, you could probably take an iPad and sketch it. But you want to draw it out and not really worry about, can I do this in App Dynamics or whatever tool you're using to build dashboards. This is not just tied to App Dynamics, but just what do I actually want to get out of it? What are the, the graphs? What are the metrics I want to put where? Don't worry about what's possible, worry about why. So if someone says, I want to see the response time here, ask them why. What are you going to do if it goes too high? What do you define as too high? Is it outside a baseline or do you have a threshold? If you ask all those kind of questions and take a load of notes about it, you'll end up with the essence of what you want out of a dashboard. And if you start with that, you're going to get a good dashboard. Does that all make sense? Does everyone agree with that? few nods. Then you get to actually start with the building piece. So this is the bit where you take what you've drawn and you move it into App Dynamics, maybe change the way it looks a little bit, make it look funky. Then take this dashboard back to the person you're building it for or back to kind of think about it yourself and review it and sell it to yourself. Does it achieve everything that I wanted to achieve? Not does it look the same, but does it actually allow you to achieve the same outcomes? Then every good dashboard takes revisions. There'll be multiple revisions of good dashboards. If I go into a customer and I see a whole list of dashboards and none of them have been updated in 18 months, I can guarantee no one's looking at them. Because any dashboard that you look at on a regular basis, you think, oh, I should add this in, or I should get rid of that, or that's changed. Your business doesn't stay static for 18 months, so why would the dashboards that allow you to change your business. It doesn't make any sense. So building dashboards is, is, is a continuous uh, improvement process. You need to be thinking about planning it, checking it, acting on it, and then going back around and, and, and doing the whole thing again. So point number three, where can I find help? And this is where I shamelessly promote my 13,000 YouTube views. There's a bunch of stuff already. If you haven't seen these two uh, videos, there's some bitly links there. Your other option is to search for my name and App Dynamics. So Andrew Jackson App Dynamics, you will see uh, my LinkedIn profile and I've linked the videos in there. While you're in Google, I also recommend searching for App Dynamics Dashboard University. We have a course on there that is gonna tell you how to do a lot of the basics. So if you're starting from a, a technical ground zero, you wanna kind of watch that video, I would search for that as well. Um, make an apology for the language in this one maybe, but this is a really good article and I highly recommend it. And there's two reasons. The author of this article, first of all, starts off by saying, I've created a lot of shitty dashboards, which I have as well, by the way, and I, I think every SE in App Dynamics has and every, yeah, well, salespeople would as well if they tried. And second of all, he says, most dashboards are shitty, and I agree with that. Um, I walk around and whenever 
I visit customers, I always look at the dashboards on the wall and there's a lot of poor dashboards up on the wall. So take a read through this. There are a lot of laws in there that say, if you do this, you will end up with a rubbish dashboard. I highly recommend it. So let's go through a few new tips. Um, has anyone, hands up in the room, who's created a dashboard already in AppDynamics? Keep your hand up if you've used an iframe in there. Good, and this is gonna be good for most of you. So iframes are really cool because they actually allow you to put anything you want into AppDynamics. So the first thing I did was search for iframe widgets in Google, and the first one that came up was a clock. This is a website which you can pick what type of clock you want, and it just gives you a nice simple URL that you can copy. So if you were to take that URL, put it in your browser, you would see a picture of a clock. If instead you take that and put it in the iframe widget, now I've got that picture of a clock in my AppDynamics dashboard. So being outcome driven, the reason I'm doing this is actually I have multiple different help desk centers and I wanna make sure that I'm calling the right one that's open at that particular time of day. So rather than having to go out and look at what time it is and what time it is in different locations, I wanna build my dashboard with some clocks on it so I can see who should I be calling given that it's what, 3 p.m. On a, uh, in, in the UK. So now I've got this dashboard, the next thing I'm gonna do is go into the share options and click share dashboard. This may be a little bit confusing wording. What it does is it creates a URL that you can then copy and send to anyone. Now these are, this, this is a little bit where you need to make sure you're doing the right thing because these links can be seen by anyone. You don't have to log into AppDynamics to see these links. So don't create anything that you don't wanna share and, and share this URL because anyone can see it. So once I've copied the URL, this is my live clocks on an AppDynamics dashboard on our demo controller. You can see they're all ticking away and I now know what time it is in London, New York and San Francisco. The next thing I'm gonna do is take that dashboard that I've created, that URL that we just saw and I'm gonna put it inside another iframe. So I've now got an iframe of three iframes within an iframe. That allows me to put that iframe onto any other dashboard and actually reuse it. So I can have the same three clocks and I can put them on multiple different dashboards. So no matter which dashboard I'm on, I can always see what time it is in the different locations around the world. The last piece you can do in here is then uh, Thinking about back to our use case, which is I want to call the relevant people, whether it's London, New York, or San Francisco. Instead of just having the word London, I'm going to put a label in here. And not many people know you can put some simple HTML into labels. So anyone who's not written HTML before, this is an anchor tag, and I've put a href in there. What that does is creates a link. So I'm going to link the word London to a telephone number. And if you put tell colon and a telephone number, what it does is creates a link on there that you can click. So if you have Skype on your desktop or if you're looking at this on a mobile phone dashboard, now I know what time it is in London, New York, and San Francisco. When I wanna call them, I click on London and you can see on the right hand side, the left hand side for you. No, the right hand side. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> yeah. You can see on one of the sides that you can actually just press the button and get a call. So that's kind of the first half of, of the agenda so far. The, the next three points um, we're gonna go through are how do we make health indicators look good? And this is one of the, the things that I think really makes App Dynamics stand apart in, in what we do. I've seen customers who say, this dashboard looks great, you know, the, the, the vendor dashboard looks great. I think the best dashboards look like your company. I've built dashboards for customers that look like their websites, that look like their team sites. We blend App Dynamics in so you don't even necessarily know it's App Dynamics. I think those are the best dashboards and I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then we're gonna look a little bit at how do I compare releases, whether that's time-based or whether that's a version that we, that we run in a canary style release. And then the last piece is, how do I instigate a dashboard revolution? This is my call to action to everyone in the room. So, how do we make dashboards look really good? We can start with lots of different types of alerts. And the way we create these is always the same. 
in that we have the same health rule indicator in the background that you have everywhere else. And we create an image that goes over the top with transparent parts, or a, a GIF with a hole in it, will allow you to see what's behind. Then we order these so that you've got the image in front of the health rule indicator. That allows us to create really cool dashboards that look like your business. So this is one we've created for AD Financial. And you can see everything in here is, is created in the same way I've just discussed, where we've got a health rule indicator that's sat behind an image. And everything else just sits on top of that image. I'm going to show you how we created that. First of all, first off, you want to go into an image manipulation tool. So here's one that I use, uh, which is GIMP for the Mac. Um, our CEO came from a company called Adobe. I think they've got something that does photo manipulation. So your, your choice. Um, I prefer the free one. You're then going to take that image and drop it into something called Base64 encoding. So if you search for Base64, this is the one I use, which is Base64-image.de. Um, all it does is takes that image, you drag and drop it in, and then you press the copy code button. And what it gives you is something that looks like this, which doesn't look pretty. It's also 20 times as long as that for this image. It's not pretty. So don't paste it anywhere. If you paste it in the wrong places, it is going to crash things like Word. It doesn't like it. However, if you take that into App Dynamics and stick it in an image widget, you will get that image. That means you don't have to find somewhere to host the image. It means you can resize the image on the page. It all becomes scalable. It helps you a lot in, in creating really cool dashboards. So that's how we created this one here. It has one image. And it has a bunch of health rule indicators behind it. It has some labels over the top. And it has the events widget on the right-hand side that tells you what's going on if there is a red indicator. Now, you don't have to stop at having just GIFs. You can have animated GIFs. <laughs> so I would love to see what some of these kind of what you come up with for some of these. Um, my favorite one there is, is one that my, my boss, Asuka, created for me, which is uh, the one that's it used to be a unicorn, now has my face on it. <laughs> so you can be really creative with these and create anything you want. Um, I, I also like the cat. Um, it does look rather evil when something goes wrong. So um, these can be really cool as well. So going on to how do we compare releases. So there's two ways we see. Um, releases going at the moment. So does anyone use Canary releases and have multiple live versions at the same time? Maybe one hand. It's kind of where everything is probably going. I mean, it allows you to say not only is that release working, but is it better than the current release? Should I move to it? Do I move uh, users back to it? I think mostly what we see still is a, a cutover date at the time we move to a new version. So I'm assuming Everyone who didn't put their hands up is more of a version to version approach. So I'm going to show you how App Dynamics works with both. If we take any particular um, widget, and this is a, a funnel widget, you can see in here where we've added the version to the first step. So we've got two things going on. We've got you know to 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 count whether we we want this session or not. It has to be the authenticate step, and it has to be version number one. I can then create a second funnel and put version number two. Now, to achieve this, we've actually put a data collector in there that collects the version number as we go through. That might be available to you. It might not be available to you. The other way that we do this is by unchecking the, the widget at the top. Now, every widget in App Dynamics has this time range. And you can either check it to say, use whatever the dashboard time range is, or you can uncheck it and set whatever you want it to be. Now, this comes in really useful if you go in and say, I want to set a custom time range and pick the time range of your previous release and the time range of your current release, or maybe the last five minutes. It also means that that particular widget will always have the same time range. So if you want to compare today to yesterday, you could set one for yesterday, but it will always be that particular day as you move forward in time. So you've got to be a little bit careful with how you use these. Now, the last section I'm going to run through is really my call to action to everyone in the room. 
um, and it's how to instigate a dashboard revolution to take everything that we've discussed, to take the fact that you know, a dashboard can either just be something that goes up on the wall and people look at it and go, well, that's good, or it can be something that really drives transformation in your business. And we're going to go through an example with BP. BP ran a dashboard competition with App Dynamics in March this year. And I wanted to share with you what happened when we ran this. So to start with, following the advice that we've just discussed, which is let's plan it first rather than just doing it, we set some objectives. What do we want to actually happen when we run this competition? We then invited quite a few people to come and take part in the competition. We ran a kickoff meeting where we explained in detail why we're doing it, what we want to achieve, and where we want to get to. We ran check-in sessions where App Dynamics came in. We supported the activity. We helped build some of the dashboards. It was all driven by ideas from within BP. But we came in and actually supported with, how do I make this into a reality? We then had a presentation day where we picked, who do we think the winner is? And the winner wasn't the prettiest dashboard. It was the dashboard that actually met certain criteria. And we didn't stop there. We keep going back to these dashboards. We make sure they're still useful. We ask what we can do to change them and improve them. By the way, the, the timeline here um, from the kickoff meeting to the presentation day was one month. So this is not a long process. We gave them a month to think about what they want to create, create it, and play it back. When we set the expectations of what we were aiming for, there were three main points that we wanted to take into consideration. First off, what is the business trying to achieve at the moment? So every company has some strategic initiatives that are happening. And one of the scoring points was, how well aligned are we to what the business is trying to achieve? Because we want to make sure that people think about this. You know, some, of the, some of the developers in your organization are really smart people who can help you change the business. But sometimes you have to tell them what the business is doing. You know, that, that communication doesn't always happen. So here's the business initiatives. Here's the things we're trying to achieve. And here's the outcomes that we want to get from this. So if we've got a bunch of priorities, I want to set objectives that I'm going to achieve using this dashboard. And then the last piece is, how do I use App Dynamics to really enable those outcomes? We had six teams enter. Uh, the teams were between three and five people per team. And they all came from around the compliance, regulatory risk, and finance area of the business. Um, some of these people had never met before. So they all get to meet each other. They're all working with different people. Some people were already a team, and they chose to work together on a problem that really annoyed them. We then had the presentation day where we turned up. Uh, we had some swag. We gave away some t-shirts and some, some mugs. But mostly what we did was put the dashboards on the wall. And I'm going to click through some of them, but I'm not going to go into what the dashboard is because it's not relevant to you. This is only relevant to one company because it's their business priorities, their business outcomes, and what they wanted to achieve from it. But the idea here is, as we went through the presentation, each team stood up and they sold the dashboard to us. And there was a panel of different people there. Um, I was there from App Dynamics. There was the customer success team. There was the post sales team. And then there was different people from the BP business. And we're going to hear from Eamon in a second about why he sponsored this. But we were all in the room, and we all decided who the winner should be. You can see these dashboards are, I think, they're quite pretty. They look good from a distance. But the most important thing is they told us how they were going to use them. They told us that when, when this happens and this goes red, you double click on this, and it takes you to the next screen, where you can see the funnel, and I can see exactly where people are dropping off in this process. And I can see every single thing that needs to happen for us to close out at the end of day. And when I start hearing that stuff, I'm getting excited because this isn't just some pretty dashboard on the wall. That's three ser a series of three dashboards that allows them to hone on exactly what the problem is and save time in that problem resolution process. There's another dashboard, and, and actually this is the winner that we picked. This was a team who, um, they, every day, they created a report on the business. And they realized, actually, why are we doing this ourselves? Why are we manually creating this report? Could we not automate this report? And we took this, they took this concept and created the report that now is every day just already there and available for them to use. 
it saved them quite a lot of time. So what were the teams saying about our dynamics? The first thing is um, not only were the six teams of three to five people who got involved in this, but when they posted the winner up, it was the most liked post on their team site. That means everyone in, in this area of the business read it, liked it, was interested, wanted to get more information about it. There are three quotes that, that I wanted to highlight in here, which are, rather than gut feel, and instead of having to replicate an issue, we can use app dynamics. That means no longer do you need that tribal knowledge. No longer do you have to go and spend hours recreating the problem. I can look at app dynamics, see exactly what happened, and how to fix it. It allows us to work across time zones rather than being in our own development bubble. Kind of ties into the example I gave before of knowing which teams from where are going to be involved in this. And we can identify database issues before it impacts the workflow, which is great because now I'm actually reducing the number of P1s and P2s in the business. So what were the benefits of running the competition? At this point, I'm going to invite Eamon up to the stage. Um, Eamon's going to be speaking on our panel. Um, he's one of our agents of transformation and was actually the sponsor of this within BP. So Eamon, over to you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's me. Um, <laughs> So I'm not going to do an introduction. I'm just going to uh, share three messages with you. One of the reasons we wanted to do this, and I was talking to AppDynamics, we were, my, we were implementing and deploying AppDynamics. We started a while ago, but I felt the pace was slow. And every time somebody deploys it within my teams, they go, there's like an aha moment, like, oh, it does that. Oh, it does this. Oh, look what I just found out. You know, stuff like that. So I was talking to AppDynamics, and I said, look, I want to expedite this. How can we do this, et cetera? And this idea came, the dash, you know, this uh, competition. I'm, I'm going to call it gamification. Gamification absolutely works. Is Russ here? Uh, so somebody in my team. Yeah, there is Russ. So two, year, two, weeks ago, two days ago, I was telling him, I'm, you know, we're going to do this session. I was like, last minute, they asked me if I can speak. I said, so what does he do? He whispers in my ear, and he says, his team should have won it um, because, because he felt so, so you know he is in the losing team. So, but, um, so it does work. I mean, you know, this is two months ago and still thinks his team should have won it. They do have, I'll give them the credit, they have the most popular uh, um, uh, dashboard, which is I think Andy was going to present it. You can, if you ask Andy, I don't mind, he can show you. Which the team did, uh, and Mark is there. I can see Mark somewhere. Yeah, he did this, I think where they have the dashboard, then they have a picture of me. It's got to, I think, you still got a challenge to, to, to work in smiling and uh, not smiling. But it, what it does, when it's, re when it's have some issues, it turns like a, my glasses to red color. And <laughs> when everything is going well, I've got that smiley face with my glasses a, a green. So they do have the most popular dashboard, but I think based on the criteria, they didn't make it. But gamification work. And the third point is I, I would like to thank App dynamics for this because it was me sitting saying, hey, we gotta expedite this, we gotta make this more pull rather than sometimes it feels like a push. So what do we do? They came up with this idea, great idea, and a number of other ideas. So I, th I wanna thank you for this. They didn't ask me to say this, I'm just saying thank you for doing this. And make sure if you do any competition, make them wait, pay for the prizes because they did pay. <laughs> they, they did pay for the winners uh, for the prizes. Uh, that's all I was gonna say, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Eamon. What we discussed there was, you know, I can tell you all this stuff, but this is actually something that Eamon sponsored as a CIO in uh, BP, and this is something which he's passionate about, and, and it's one of the reasons why he's transforming the business. And I think I wanted to get that across to everyone in the room that App Dynamics is willing to, to help and enable you to do these things. Um, one of the ways in which we can help is if anyone was in the, the other room on breakout one in the last session, um, the team up there offered that we have a pack. One of the parts of that pack for adoption is actually that, that same process that we followed with BP in order to run this competition. So two things. Number one, please feel free to download that. Number two, get in contact with your App Dynamics rep. We're happy to help and, and discuss ways in which we can help you run this competition as well. So in summary, we started off by looking at 
how do I make people achieve and help me achieve the goals that I'm setting? This is the most important part of making a dashboard for me. How do I get people to actually act on what we see? Then we looked at where we can begin with dashboards and where can I find help? And there's a lot of stuff and actually, you know, I'd love to see more customers posting some, some material up there as well. I think that'd be really great. We looked at what new tips we've got. We looked at iframes, how we can use an iframe within an iframe and try not to get all inception on it, but we can start to create reusable pieces of dashboard that we want to put in multiple places. We then looked at how we can compare releases. Maybe some of those release comparisons actually would go into an iframe on another dashboard as well. And we looked at how do we create a dashboard revolution. Anyone interested in running a dashboard revolution and, and creating some competition and gamification in their own business, please do come and see me afterwards. I'm more than happy to talk with you about it. Thank you very much. Thank you.